So the UK has done another pivot and they have stopped quantitative easing. They have shut down the printing presses and now the bond market is left in the hands of fate and investors are terrified. And make no mistake, the British bond market is still extremely fragile. And if we look at the 10-year guild, it looks as though all that money printing hasn't made much of a difference. Before the Bank of England intervened with QE, bond yields spiked to nearly 4.5% and today, it has gone back up just shy of 4.4%. Are we back to square one? And this is a classic example of how just throwing money at a problem isn't a solution. A central bank intervening in the capital markets isn't a show of strength, but a sign of weakness. Investors knew that UK bonds their hot potatoes and they decided to dump what they had right and let the Bank of England buy up their junk. The BOE wasn't the saviour of the guilt markets, they were the cleanup crew. And this is the big problem the UK markets face, which is a confidence crisis. Investors, they are spooked, they are afraid, and uncertainty is not a good thing. Right now, we have fear spreading throughout the British markets. We have UK pension funds panic selling their assets to meet margin calls. And this has extended to their US dollar corporate bond holdings. Now, we have the FTSE 100 falling for six days straight, as now there's no more free money being injected into the system. We can see a temporary rise from the 29th when the BOE started the bailout, but then the markets collapsed again after they announced an end to all the money printing. Fear returned to the markets, the Bank of England is no longer pumping liquidity to prop up the system, and investors are running away from London. They know that the bond market is still on the verge of cracking, and if it collapses, the fallout will take down the British stock market as well. Now, this is the problem with government interventions in capital markets. Investors just don't know what to expect. And when people are uncertain, they just pack their bags and they run away. Ray Dalio is right when he said, the panic selling you are now seeing is due to the recognition that the big supply of debt that will have to be sold by the government is too much for the demand. And that makes people want to get out of the debt and currency. And now that the BOE has stopped buying British bonds, the markets are back on the precipice of collapse. So what does this U-turn mean for the UK's bond and stock market? Well, things are definitely not looking good. Firstly, the Bank of England spent almost £20 billion sterling to buy up the British guilds during these two weeks. And by modern measures, this isn't a huge amount of money and falls short of their original £100 billion target. But we can see that most of the buying came at the end of the plan. Investors and pension funds started unloading their bonds aggressively towards the end. And this shows us that their confidence in British bonds is breaking. They are probably thinking to themselves, once the BOE stops buying, there will be no one crazy enough to buy the guilds, so we better sell now. And this tells us that confidence is lost and it's easy to see why. We have the governor of the Bank of England coming out with guns blazing. He has warned of a big rate hike coming. Remember that August inflation for the UK is still sky high at 9.9%. And this is causing chaos on the streets of Britain. We have protests popping up across the country with posts and rail workers carrying out strikes over pay and conditions. And that's a big problem, right? That's the problem with inflation. It affects the lower income and the working class more. And just like in America, inflation is still the number one enemy in the UK. And here's the thing, the Bank of England knew the fiscal plan was a bad idea from the start. You can't just print money, increase the money supply, and think that inflation won't get worse. In a report from Bloomberg, we have the Bank of England's chief economist, Hu Pio, admitting that fiscal stimulus will add to demand and inflation, and interest rates are likely to rise sharply in November to fight inflation and respond to the stimulus from the government. And this means that the UK guilds are still likely going to keep rising, right? The yields, they are going to reflect the reality in the UK very soon. Now, if the Bank of England does a big hike, we could very easily see the yield on the 10-year hit back and test the previous high of 4.6%. And we all know what that means. Borrowing costs are going to go up, companies are going to suffer, and layoffs are on the horizon. Now, let's quickly talk about least trust U-turn on a tax cut policy. Now, originally, the plan was to keep the corporate tax at 19%, and now the tax rate is going to rise to 25%. And this should be a bearish sign, but weirdly enough, the FTSE actually surged up because of this news. Or maybe it was because the finance minister, Kuo Tang, was fired just six weeks into his job, and the markets wanted a better finance minister, 
So they kind of consider this a victory of sorts. However, let's take a step back and analyze this temporary recovery. Now, the Bank of England is going to hike rates again, and it could be a big one. Plus, corporate tax is going up, which means fewer profits and slower growth for companies. And let's not forget that winter is coming. So this move up in stock prices is likely just a knee-jerk reaction, and we will be giving up all those gains very soon. But there's another underlying risk that's lurking underneath. And that is the UK pension funds. Funds that were using leverage on old people's money and they were crushed when yields spiked up. And we have the Bank of England telling pension funds to rebalance their books and deleverage. And they don't want another pension scare where QE infinity is repeated. But here's the big question. Have pension funds fully rebalanced their positions? Have they reduced their leverage? We really don't know and it's now a wait and see game. And we must appreciate the gravity of the BOE stopping the QE. This is a serious move because if the Bank of England flips again like a pancake and pivots back to money printing, they will lose a ton of credibility. This will make the Federal Reserve look like the best central bank in the world. And this is the big problem with government interventions in capital markets. It's a double-edged sword. We have seen the terrible effects of the 08 banking bailouts and money printing back in 2020 and now the Bank of England is learning this lesson in real time. We have investors extremely nervous if the UK markets will continue a meltdown. If we compare the FTSE to S&P 500, we can see something very interesting. The FTSE is down only 9% while the S&P has crashed by 25%. But ask yourself this question, is the UK's market really stronger than the United States? The Fed, to their credit, has not done any U-turn yet. They're still pulling money out of the system. The BOE actually cracked and had to do a bailout. So the British markets might not be reflecting reality just yet. And if the British bond values keep falling and stock markets keep crashing, the pound sterling is going to take a further beating. There will be less of an incentive to invest in the British markets and investors are going to demand a cheaper pound to the dollar to buy UK assets, right? We can see the pound has crashed by 18% to the dollar and this is feeding into the local inflation. Yes, yes, recovered a little, but it's still likely going to crash all the way down to parity 1 is to 1 of the dollar. We have global banks like Standard Chartered, Nomura and Morgan Stanley all coming together and chanting the same thing. The pound sterling is going to weaken by at least 10% more thanks to government policy missteps. We can see that the pound has risen from its lows, but the bear market trend is still rather strong. And there's a serious confidence crisis in the UK right now. And it doesn't matter whether it's the bond market, stock market, or the local currency. And this is just going to feed into a stronger US dollar. Remember, in today's Twilight Zone economics, the dollar is the safe haven because it's still the reserve currency. Because just think about it. If you're invested in the UK market, you don't know what will happen a month down the road. You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. Will the bond market break again? Will the government suddenly intervene again and get the BOE to print money? Because in the free market, the pension funds should have collapsed because of their risky bets. But that isn't the case, right? The winners and the losers are now decided by central bank action. Investors now have to plan an investing strategy that includes potential bailouts. It's no longer about if an economy is strong or will recover organically, but if the Bank of England will come in and save the day. And this is becoming the new reality of investing. Government interventions might help restore short-term stability to the market, but it is likely comes at the cost of long-term credibility. And when investors are afraid, they run away. And right now, we can see that the UK is on the verge of a recession, right? And let's recall the definition of a recession. It's two negative quarters of GDP growth. And right now, we clearly have a negative Q2 GDP. And just take a look at Q3. July's GDP growth is 0.06 while August has seen a contraction of 0.33. We are just one month away from the UK officially being in a recession. And according to Goldman Sachs, the tax U-turn will likely make this recession worse. So government intervention in the UK has actually made the situation worse than before. And this is the law of unintended consequences. Trying to stimulate your crashing economy when inflation is still high evidently isn't a good idea. And the big question now is if the UK will ride out the pain to the other side or if they will suddenly pivot again to save the economy because further government interventions might 
push the UK markets off the cliff. And we are seeing dangerous signs that any more interventions, especially if it's QE money printing, will just crash the pound even further. We can see that the UK's current account deficit is widening. The UK has been a net importer of goods and commodities for a long time, but a weaker pound versus the dollar is making this worse. The UK is becoming a bigger debtor to the world, and right now, even the United States is having difficulties selling off their treasuries through his money, right? It will be even worse for the UK to borrow cash from the public for their spending. Their yields will have to rise even further, which will add even more pressure to their economy. And if you think that the UK has enough US dollar reserves to ride out the storm like Japan, you might be wrong. We have the former Bank of England deputy governor admitting that Britain's forex reserves won't be able to prop up the pound. He said, we don't have much reserves compared to the scale of the currency markets, so I think that's not an effective weapon. So the British economy is still in a very fragile state, and there are three things on the horizon that could crash the markets even further. Now, firstly, is there still any systemic risk in the pension funds? Have they fully deleveraged their positions? And are the big British banks at risk as well? And no one knows for sure, because we could very well see another bond crisis as rates continue to go up. And second, winter is coming. Will the UK face an energy crisis like Europe? And how are they going to solve the problem? Will they just throw money again at the problem? And finally, if the pound crashes to parity with the dollar, can the British government step back and let the free market do its job or will they intervene again? Because sometimes the best solution is you just let the chaos play out and pick up the pieces later. Money printing and trying to save the markets isn't always the best solution. You might prevent short-term pain, but investors won't have much faith in your economy anymore. So let me know what you think. Will the Bank of England pivot again for the third time back to QE? Or will they let the UK ride through the recession for a real recovery? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.